Have you ever booted up a new game that you should love, but you just couldn't? Or maybe you tried to dive into a game you've already sunk hundreds of hours into and it just doesn't bring you the same joy that it did before. Well, there's a scientific reason for that and once you know it, you can fix it. I've put everything you need to know into this video so you can follow it and make sure every gaming session is a great one. Before I teach you how to reignite that spark intentionally, we have to understand both the inner and outer reasons why we lose that spark in the first place. Part 1. Why should doesn't always mean will. When you think about why you love certain games, you probably think about genre, story, gameplay, and more. But the real reason we enjoy games is much deeper than that. It comes down to three things that your brain is always chasing. First up is autonomy, the freedom of choice. Second is competence, the feeling of being skilled and capable and feeling like you're growing. And third is relatedness, feeling connected even in a single player game. This comes from a major psychological model called the self-determination theory. When a game hits all three of these notes, your brain gets hooked. You're locked in. But if even one of these needs is blocked, suddenly the magic dies. Then you lose interest. Let me give you some examples of these feelings and tell me in the comments if you've ever experienced this. I know I have. Some games give you an abundance of autonomy, giving you more choices than you could ever hope for, but overwhelm you to a point that you feel incompetent. Or have you tried a game that offers challenge and mastery, but has no emotional or social connection to either the game or other characters? Or a game offered plenty of challenges and opportunities for mastery, but there was no emotional or social connection to the game, the characters, or other people, and you felt alone. When our brain's needs aren't fully met, boredom creeps in. But it's more complicated than this because not everyone's brain craves the same flavor of fun. Some people crave freedom above all else, even the other two categories, and some people crave connection more than the ability to feel skilled or have freedom of choice. We all need all three core concepts, but in varying amounts. So rank these three, autonomy, competence, and relatedness, in order of least to most important to you, and that will give you an idea of what gaming personality you are, which is our next stop. Psychologists have mapped out different gamer personalities and you likely fall into one or multiple of these based on how important the three needs are to you. The first gamer personality type is the achiever. They love goals, trophies, and leveling up. The second personality type is the explorer. They love to explore the open world, find hidden secrets or unearth lore. The third personality type is the socializer. They enjoy friendship and teamwork in their games. And the fourth personality type is the killers. They love intense competition. This is called Bartle's Taxonomy, and it's important to understand where you sit in a gamer personality type so that we can craft out our perfect gaming session. And it's worth noting that you can have multiple personality types. For instance, I'm an achiever with hints of explorer and killer personality types. So, even if a game matches your genre preference, your favorite setting, and more, if it doesn't match your core needs as a player, you'll still feel disconnected. For example, an explorer personality type playing a hardcore arena-based shooter game would feel trapped. A socializer personality type playing a single Lone Survivor RPG style game might feel lonely. And an achiever playing an open sandbox game with no real direction might feel aimless. Any of these sound familiar? So now we understand the needs our brain is chasing and the lens that we chase them through. But here's the twist, your gaming personality can change. Studies show that both age and life events can reshape what we seek from our gaming sessions. So, if the games you used to love don't hit the same notes anymore, maybe it's time to try something new, but more on that later. Part 2, The Invisible Roadblocks. So we now understand our basic gaming needs and player types, but what are the things that actually get in the way? First, there's choice overload. 
Too many games in your library can be paralyzing, and if your backlog looks anything like mine, then you know what I'm talking about. Psychologists call this the paradox of choice. When faced with endless options, your brain freezes and can't pick, and that's a lot of times why billionaires' kids are always bored. And so, it picks nothing. Or you do pick, and you start second-guessing yourself, saying things like, eh, maybe, maybe I should, I should have, have picked, picked something, something else. else. The next roadblock is a lack of flow. When great games match your current personality type, they'll naturally pull you into a flow state. That feeling where time vanishes and you're just in the game. You know what I mean? But to hit flow, you need your perfect balance. The game can't be too easy or you'll get bored. And the game can't be too hard or you'll get frustrated. If we miss that sweet spot that hits all three of our gaming needs, then the experience collapses. Our third roadblock is mood and stress. Scientific studies have shown that if you're stressed, anxious, or mentally exhausted, your brain literally has a harder time enjoying the game. In this case, it's not about the game being bad, it's about your brain being stuck in survival mode instead of being able to change into play mode. Another roadblock is burnout, which happens when you force yourself to grind endlessly or play a game out of some sense of obligation. I know a lot of you streamers out there feel this one in particular. This typically means you've burned out the dopamine circuit that games rely on and your brain has built up a dopamine tolerance. In other words, the game stops feeling like play and starts to feel like work. The last roadblock is performance pressure. This can come from things like trying to 100% every game, or trying to climb the ranks in competitive mode, or trying to perfect every single build. You just might be squeezing the life out of the game. This is called the over-justification effect, where external goals replace the natural joy of the activity. All these forces, either individually or together, are silently sabotaging your gaming joy. Here's the good news, there's a fix for every single one of these, but there's one more ingredient. Part 3, the secret ingredient, emotional energy. Every session you play, you're not just bringing your fingers and your thumbs, you're bringing your emotional energy. When you're feeling low, stressed, tired, and burnt out, even the best games are going to stutter. When you're full, curious, relaxed, and excited, even a simple indie game can feel like magic. Managing your emotional energy is a secret weapon here and it's easier than you think. Part four, the blueprint, or how to enjoy every gaming session according to science. Step one, prep your mind. Before you start any gaming session, take two minutes to check in with yourself. Are you stressed, exhausted, or burned out? If yes, maybe today isn't the day for a hardcore RPG like Dark Souls or Bloodborne. Maybe today's for cozy games like a turn-based war simulator or quick matches. Play to match your energy, not your backlog. On days like this, I'll go play Total War Warhammer instead of playing Monster Hunter with my friends. Step two, limit your choices. Make a small, now playing list, like movies at the theaters. Limit this list to three to five games and remove everything else from your immediate view. Write them down if you have to. Too many options can kill a gaming session before it starts. And remember, your gaming personality may have shifted recently. So throw something new into the mix. You might find yourself enjoying a genre or playstyle you used to ignore or even disliked. Step three, set a tiny goal. Tell yourself, I'm just gonna complete one quest. I'm gonna do one match. I'm gonna do 20 minutes of gaming. Whatever you want it to be, and that's it. Small goals reduce pressure, elevate enjoyment, and create momentum. Step four, create a ritual. Before you hit start, do a simple ritual. Dim the lights, grab a drink and a snack, put on your favorite gaming jacket, whatever you want it to be, and remind yourself, this is my time to enjoy my game. Going through a predictable, fixed set of motions helps your brain transition into gaming mode and prime the engine to sink in and really enjoy what you're playing. Step five, flow first, goals later. Your first mission isn't to win, it's to get into a flow state so you can actually have fun. 
Choose activities that match your current skill and energy level and adjust difficulty if you need to. Chase the feeling of being absorbed in the game, not the scoreboard or your grind list. Step six, play with curiosity, not pressure. You're not here to perform. You're here to laugh, explore, experiment, and have fun. Even if you're a streamer where gaming is your job, that's what they want to see from you, and that's why you became a streamer. If you want a 100% later, fine. Just not today. Play the game. Step seven, quit without guilt. If you're just not feeling it today, even after going through all the other steps, then shut it down. Play should never feel like a punishment, and the more you try to force it, the harder it gets. The more you push yourself to gain, even when you don't feel like it, the harder it gets with each progressive session to get into that flow state and really get absorbed into a game. And then your brain starts to associate displeasure with gaming. So take a break, refresh your mind, maybe go watch a movie or a TV show and try again tomorrow. Gaming is supposed to feel like magic, and now you have the spell book to bring that magic back. Enjoyment isn't luck, it's a skill. A skill you now know how to gain experience in. So go level it up and have some fun. And if you're playing Monster Hunter Wilds right now, I'll see you in the Gathering Hub. Bye!